Hey, hey, party people. In this episode of Watch Me Design a Fashion Collection series, I want to address a question I get a lot. Zoe, do I need to learn how to make patterns and sew in order to become a fashion designer? All right, before we jump into it, let me take one quick second to talk about what I'm doing on the screen. Now that I've finalized my fabric story, I'm picking markers out for my design sketches. Like an idiot, I was putzing around until I realized that I should be using my marker color charts. <laughs> I mean, why did I go to all the trouble of making them, right? <laughs> After this, I'm going to make a list of colors I need to buy, if any, and then I'm going to pull all the best rough designs that I've created over the course of this entire project. And then in the next video in this series, I'm going to go over each design and just really deep dive into the construction, round out the design, figure out the back, figure out I'm getting into each of these things, closures, you know, all that sort of thing, okay? Now, back to sewing for designers. Do I need to learn how to make patterns and sew in order to become a fashion designer? And a lot of people, they follow up by saying, Zoe, I have so many ideas. I can sketch. I'm good at predicting trends. I don't want to sew. Uh, everyone says designers don't even sew when they're working in the industry. Do I have to learn all this stuff? Before I get into my thoughts on the matter, just know that if you're going to fashion school, there is a 99.999999% chance that you will be required to take all kinds of construction courses and that if you do not pass these courses, you will not be able to graduate. Let's parse this out. You say you have so many ideas. That's great, but design is not ideas. Design is execution of ideas. Ideas are only the beginning. Literally speaking, shoppers do not buy ideas. They buy the results of those ideas. They buy pants that make their butts look great. And they buy dresses that make them stand out at parties. And they buy coats that keep them warm in sub-zero temperatures. If you can't turn your ideas into physical clothes, there's nothing to admire on your runway. Your ideas mean nothing if you can't bring them to fruition. Two, you say you can sketch. That's great. Sketching is important, but yeah, sketching is not designing. Sketching is one step in the design process. And I say this as someone who teaches sketching. I love fashion illustration, I love drawing, and uh, I understand its importance to both illustrators and designers. And yet, I'm first and foremost a designer, and I know that sketching is only one step in the design process. Sketching is 2D and fashion is so very, very 3D. Designing is being inspired and learning how to apply that inspiration into something physical. It's about applying color theory to create beautiful color stories for your collection. Designing involves understanding how fabrics drape. It's about playing with details and embellishments. Design involves a beautiful fit, textures that feel good on the skin, Honestly, if you mostly only love sketching, consider a career in illustration instead. Number three, you say you're good at predicting trends. This is a really subjective, nebulous skill, even more so than drawing. If trend prediction is what you really love, maybe you should look into fashion forecasting. Honestly, a lot of you would do well to watch my careers in fashion video. I'll link it down in the description box below. There are a lot of career paths in the industry that aren't clothing design. And I'm not saying, oh, you can't be a designer. I'm just saying, find the career path that makes you happy. Number four, something you have heard is that designers don't sew in the industry, and that's why you think you don't need to learn it. For the most part, you're right. Designers mainly do not cut patterns or sew day to day working in the industry, especially if they're working for a larger company but we know how. For designers, learning garment construction firsthand is not about becoming the most gifted seamstress or pattern cutter. It's about how, knowing how garments are constructed and that knowledge helping us to be 
better designers, more creative designers, and more efficient designers. <laughs> you must have noticed by now, fashion moves fast. Efficiency is important. Creative on a deadline, always, right? That's, that's how we do in fashion. You know, you're watching me sketch right now, but I want to emphasize what's going in, on in my head as I sketch, okay? Things that are going on too fast for me to narrate in real time. But as I'm sketching, I'm referring back to my fabrics constantly. That's why I have them in front of me. I'm thinking about what fabrics are thin enough to do drawstrings and gathers, which fabrics are sturdy enough to take a nice big pocket to carry some stuff, because I don't like useless pockets, okay? If I have a pocket, I'm gonna put some stuff in it. What kind of zippers suit which fabrics? What are some ways to create those black lines, okay? Should I approach it like corset bone channels without the bones? Will I need some sort of understructure under the gathers to create the volume I want and what kind? Can I get away with a tiny bit of tool or do I need something more sturdy? Now, I have a skin of washed leather. I have a skin of unwashed leather. Let's think pros and cons. Surprising to me, the washed leather ended up stiffer than the unwashed leather. So yeah, that, that kind of threw me for a loop. Okay. As I'm sketching, I'm also putting together a to-do list, okay? One, edit out the distressed lambskin. It's not working with the rest of it. Two, design more with the gauzes and determine if I really need them. Right now, they are a novelty fabric, and if I'm only gonna use them like one or two times throughout the collection, then forget it, okay? Because I am designing, thinking about how this is gonna play out in real life, and in real life, if you don't use a fabric often enough to meet the minimum purchase requirements, then you're, it's gonna get edited out, okay? So think about if I really want those gauzes, whether I really need them, okay? Number three, do wash tests on all fabrics except the Chantilly lace. I'm just gonna assume that throwing Chantilly lace in the washing machine is gonna ruin it. <laughs> You know, you have to put care instructions on all your labels. So, you know, things like blouse weight linen will probably do okay in the wash. But yeah, that Chantilly is definitely not. So next on my to-do list, go get a yardage of some Chantilly and some eyelet lace so that I can start playing around and scrunch it in my hand and do some mock-up drapes. Also the Dissy print. What is a Dissy print? Dissy prints are any kind of print where the print is super teeny tiny. These are also called Liberty Prints because the company Liberty is famous for doing ditzy prints. It's kind of like how people use the word Kleenex for tissues. Kleenex is a company, but they're so known for making tissues that people use the two kind of as the same. Now, if I were doing this in a proper design studio, I would be ordering more sample yardage of everything that I don't have yardage of. But since it's just a mock project, I have to go the retail route. Right? Also on the to-do list, play with patching methods. You know, do I want to do some kind of super obvious top stitching or try to keep the top stitching as subtle as possible? Do I want some kind of border? Number two, I want to do some drawstring experiments to determine what shapes I get when the strings are pulled. If you recall back to the beginning videos where I was talking about how I would love to hit close to zero waist cutting, you know, that's kind of where I started thinking about the drawstrings. If I could cut as close to just pure rectangles as possible and use strategically placed drawstrings to create the kinds of fits and volumes that I want. So I want to do some experiments with that. And then I also want to think about what I can do with leather scraps where they look cool and not too much like elementary school arts and crafts class. So these are all the things that I am thinking about and listing as I'm sketching. You know, you don't have to know everything to get started. There's room for experimentation and learning in the design process. However, it helps immensely to start with a foundation of knowledge. The less you know about construction, the more you're limited to creating variations on existing clothes. And if you're cool with designing basics forever, go for it. No shame, just do it. 
Another point I'd like to add is if you run your own business, knowing how garments are supposed to be constructed and how they're supposed to look can really help you not get scammed by production contractors. People also leave me comments like, so-and-so doesn't know how to sew and they're so successful. Why do I have to learn? Listen, if you're as smart, creative, and resourceful as this person you're talking about, go for it. You don't need my advice. But here's a trend I noticed. Whenever someone uses this reasoning, the example designer is someone who is close to retirement age, already retired, or is died at a ripe old age. The industry and the world was so different back then, and the path that they took to success is not how designers find success now. Here's another way I see it. There are cooks and there are chefs. Cooks are good at following recipes and they can make delicious food. They're also pretty good at picking out good ingredients like ripe fruit and good cuts of meat. They toss out old spices, you know, Chefs start by following recipes, they experiment offshoots of recipes, and they create their own variations of recipes. And they're able to do this because they study their ingredients down to the elemental level. And they understand heat, different ways to apply heat to food, and how hot and how fast to get the effect that they want. And they play with all of these elements and then they take all this knowledge and it goes into new recipes that they create. So listen, both cooks and chefs are perfectly capable of making tasty food. But I think you get my point here. Do you want to be a cook or do you want to be a chef? There's no wrong answer. Just answer yourself truthfully. Okay, what kind of designer do you want to be? What kind of designer would you be happy being? Don't think about society or school or peers pressuring you to be a certain kind of designer, think about what kind of designer you would be happy being. But bottom line for me, for every skill you don't learn, you limit yourself to what kind of designer you can be. And moving forward, I encourage you when approaching new knowledge and skills, don't think of it as, do I need to learn this? But what are the applications of this knowledge? And will that help me be the kind of designer I want to be? Please do hit the thumbs up button if you learned something new today or if this video was helpful to you or if you just enjoyed watching me sketch. Uh, share, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell, all those good things, all those ways you show me love. And I will see you in the next video.